In this video, we'll be talking about cycling and CDK and their role in cell cycle regulation. This is a slightly longer video. Please stay tuned till the end. It would be highly beneficial and high yield. So what are cyclines? Cyclines are proteins that undergo cyclical pattern of synthesis and degradation. Hence, they are known as cyclines. So in certain stage of the cell cycle, they are produced and in certain stage of the cell cycle, they are degraded. So they are appearance or their activity is restricted in a time bound fashion and this is how they are named as cycling because their levels rise and fall in a coordinated manner with the progression of the cell cycle. And what are CDK? CDK are cycline dependent kinase. So they are obviously kinase molecules which are capable of phosphorylating but they are highly dependent on their partner which is cycline. It's like they are a couple. So without cycline, CDK cannot perform any work. So that is why they are highly dependent on each other. So cycline CDK act together as a unit. This is the take home message. Anyway, there are important functions which uh, are regulated by CDKs. At a structural level, they are serine threonine kinase. So basically, they are going to phosphorylate serine or threonine residues in the target protein. Their activity is dependent on binding to the cyclines. So without the cycline, they are nothing. CDK regulate the cell cycle progression by ph phosphorylating several target proteins that modulate events of the cell cycle. And ultimately, the activity of the cyclin CDK complex is tightly regulated by several kinases and phosphatase action. So let's look at the cyclin CDK which are active in different stages of the cell cycle. In the G1 phase, the most active cyclin is cyclin D and CDK4-6 complex. In S phase, cyclin E and CDK2 complexes are active. At the end of S phase, cyclin A and CDK2 complexes are active and in the M phase, the key cycline that takes important role is cycline B CDK1. In this video, we would try to elaborate on each of these cycline and their activity. So most important cycline is cycline D, cycline E and cycline B. In a moment, it will be clear. So let's talk about the G1 cycline or CDK complex, which is known as cycline D CDK4-6 complex. Let's see what this complex is capable of doing. So cyclin D and CDK6 complex is getting activated with when there are ample amount of growth factor signaling. Now cyclin D is directly produced in response to mitogenic signaling or growth factor signaling. So it kind of tells the cell whether growth factor is present in the environment or not. If it is present in the environment, then cyclin D would be produced, the complex would be active. For example, we know that MAP kinase pathway is triggered by growth factor binding. So obviously, one of the key downstream gene that gets activated in the ras raf arc pathway is the cyclin D. It is one of the most abundant target gene in this pathway. So cyclin D is produced uh, 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 downstream to the growth factor signaling. And now it's important to note that whether to divide or not to divide is a very critical decision that a cell has to make because it is totally energy dependent. Processes like DNA replication happening in S phase, chromosome segregation happening in the M phase, all of these things requires a hell lot of energy. So if nutrients are not present, then it is not an appropriate time to divide. So there is a particular point in the cell cycle known as restriction point where cyclin D CDK4 take critical decision. They took, took all the information from growth factor signaling, nutrient availability and stress factor based on all of these, they decide whether cell should cross restriction point or they should not cross. If restriction point is crossed, then it has to divide. So there is no point to back out. Anyway, that is why cyclin D CDK4 activity is really important. Now I'll tell you that how PRB, which is particularly a tumor suppressor protein, act to modulate the cyclin D CDK4 activity or cyclin and how basically PRB regulate the cell cycle progression. So basically it's a tumor suppressor protein, it would suppress the growth. It is produced by RB1 gene, which produces the RB1 mRNA and translates into PRB protein. Now, PRB protein acts in the restriction point. Now, it's important to note that how PRB works. 
so prb is a critical decision maker prb can actually inhibit a compound known as e2f e2f is really important for cell cycle progression to s phase because e2f can selectively bind to the dna and e2f can help to produce the um, s phase cycling but e2f is only able to do that when prb let it be separated right so when prb is separated from the e2f complex e2f can do its job so that is why separating e2f is really important now here is cyclin e production that happens when e2f binds to the dna cyclin e mrna is produced and cyclin e is produced and this is really important for replication progression but here is our inhibitor prb because prb sequesters the e2f and don't let it bind to the dna so who would tell prb to back off and this critical job is done by cycling d and cdk4 if the environment is favorable growth factor is present cell has enough nutrient then cycling d and cdk4 would phosphorylate prb and phosphorylating prb allow it to re be removed from the e2f complex so it is de inhibiting the e2f complex and basically e2f complex is now free to bind to the dna and allow the cell cycle to progress from g1 to the s phase this is how cycling d and cdk4 uh, as well as cyclin e production is really important in this G g1 and s boundary so now we understand its highlight okay now there is another protein another tumor suppressor which can modulate cyclin cdk and thereby regulate cell cycle this is p53 it's a tumor suppressor protein it plays key role in cell cycle regulation apoptosis and maintenance of the genomic stability it can actually pause the cell cycle progression in many ways but why p53 should pause cell cycle why it is important and what is the consequence so let's see let's say there is a dna damage that happened during let's say g1 phase now if this particular dna damage is not repaired there could be detrimental consequences because these are really deleterious in terms of uh, nature so basically there could be blockage of the replication fork there could be loss of a chromosome segment and the worst outcome is basically apoptosis or death of the cell now p53 can modulate the cyclin and prevent and pause the cell cycle how it is happening so basically there are specific sensors known as atm atr which can bind to the dna damage sense the dna damage and with downstream signaling pathways like which involves check 2 p53 can get activated now normally p53 is degraded but when check to phosphorylate p53 it is activated and p53 can do many things it can activate p21 which is a negative influencer of cyclin cdk activity now when p21 blocks the cyclin cdk activity cell cycle is paused cell cycle cannot progress further now you must be thinking why it is good sometimes pausing the cell cycle is important because once the cell cycle is paused it would give dna repair machinery enough time to repair this damage there are homologous recombination mechanism there are non homologous end joining mechanism by which dna can be repaired for argument's sake imagine the dna is repaired then cell cycle is resumed and the pause is done and thereby the cell cycle progression happens and cell divides now imagine the cell cycle progression is paused but the damage was beyond repair it cannot be repaired in that case cell would be uh, induced for apoptosis so p53 actually coordinate with caspase 3 and basically target the intrinsic pathway of apoptosis it activates backs and bad which pokes hole in the mitochondrial membrane basically cytochrome c leaks out ultimately caspase 3 is activated which triggers the apoptosis response now we understand how p53 modulates cyclin and thereby modulating uh, basically the cell cycle so basically one outcome was the damage was repaired cell survives and go to the cell cycle another extreme outcome was cell would die because the damage was irreversible and instead of segregating faulty chromosome it was good to kill the cell because if this is not prevented it might lead to tumor formation or a sort of cancer formation and indeed many p53 mutations are associated with cancer 
Then we move into S phase cyclines. S phase cyclin is cyclin E and CDK2 is the corresponding CDK partner. So in this case, let's see how S phase cyclin helps in the replication initiation process. So in at the end of G1, the replicator sequence is already bound to the origin of replication complex. It also binds to CTD1 and CDC6. It loads the MCM27 helicase. So these helicase would form the replication bubble. But that requires a licensing event. That licensing event is happening with the help of kinases, cyclin dependent kinases. So there are two events, replications, replicator selection, and there is another event which is origin activation. This origin activation is the licensing event that has to happen. But who gives the license? In S phase, the cyclin E and CDK2 activity is high. So this particular complex can actually phosphorylate these CTD1, CDC6 and thereby allow the replication bubble to form. So it's important to note that this replication bubble forms at the beginning of the S phase and in any other stage since these particular components CDT1, CDC6 all of them are hyperphosphorylated then what happens is they cannot get uh, reassembled into the uh, replication complex. Thereby, it also ensures that replication only happens once in the cell cycle. So this is a big achievement of the cyclin CDK complex. It ensures that replication happens only once in eukaryotic cell cycle and it never happens twice. And this is the mechanism. Anyway, you can watch the detailed video, video on eukaryotic replication to know it better. Anyway, it's important to note that in this replication initiation as well, cyclin E CDK2 complex has huge contribution. Then we talk about the M phase cyclin, which is cyclin B CDK1. Cyclin B CDK1 has different phosphorylation sites, such as threonine 14, threonine 15 are inhibitory sites, threonine 161 is activatory site. Several kinases like V1 kinase inhibitory perform inhibition with the help of phosphorylation. There are also activatory kinase such as CAC kinase. There are also activatory phosphatases which remove these phosphor inhibitory phosphorylation and allow this particular cyclin to get activated. Anyway, when cyclin B and CDK1 complex is activated, it can lead to many biological functions like chromosome condensation, nuclear envelope back breakdown, fragmentation of Golgi, spindle, apparat spindle apparatus formation, etc. Anyway, after its job is done, it would be degraded with the help of polyubiquitinylation by anaphase promoting complex. When polyubiquitinylation marks are uh, added onto the cyclin B, they are destined to be degraded by proteasome mediated degradation. Anyway, Cyclin B and CDK1 are really important kinase because in the beginning of the prophase, cyclin B CDK1 phosphorylates the lamines, which are the intermediate filaments supporting the nuclear envelope. So it leads to breakdown of the nuclear envelope. So once the nuclear envelope is broken down, the nucleus gets basically uh, separated and the chromosomes get slowly condensed. So lamin dissociation is an important event performed by cyclin B CDK1. Second thing is it can phosphorylate condensins. Condensins are structural maintenance of uh, chromosome proteins which basically condense the chromosome. This is how cyclin B CDK1 complex plays vital role in packaging and uh, condensing the chromosome at the onset of the M phase. I hope this video was useful. We talked about the G1, the S and the M phase cycling, how they work and how they are regulated. Get more notes and flashcard in our Instagram and Facebook page. You can support our video with uh, super thanks. You can pay via Paytm, PayPal or UPI. See you in next video.